Hello everybody and welcome to another video on the Traction channel. This time we are heading to Hungary and the ever-twisting Hungara ring for another track guide. This place leaves you with very little time to catch your breath and is another circuit where overtaking opportunities can be limited. Of course, what this means is that you will really need to know how to set a quick lap time around here if you want to qualify high and give yourself the best chance of a good result. Hopefully, that's where we can help you in this video. For this analysis, the car of choice is the Porsche 911, as it really suits these types of circuits, when you bounce from corner to corner without too many straight sections to compensate. First of all, we will analyse the lap, and then afterwards show you how it all comes together at full speed. So with that in mind, let's jump in for the analysis. So as you head down the main straight, move to the left, braking for turn 1 at the 100 meter board up on the fence. Keep in a straight line and shift down to second gear. Keep braking and begin to turn in just when you are alongside the marshal's hut. You want to aim for a late apex here, so just roll off the brake to get the car turned in. Get over the red and white curbs on the inside and on the power as early as you can, using all of the exit curb you need. Move back over to the right and prepare for turn 2. Here you want to focus on trail braking. Start at the beginning of the curb on the right, steering lightly into the corner as you brake. Shift down to second and hold the brakes all the way into the corner, aiming for a double apex. Try to kiss the first one, run out a tiny bit towards the middle in order to scrub the speed off, and then cut back on the power to hit the second apex, staying to the left. Shift up to third and throw the car into turn 3 on full power. Try to kiss the curb on the inside if you can. Some cars can actually ride it fully, whilst others will get completely unsettled. The Hangara Ring has a few curbs like this where car behaviour can vary, so I'd recommend trying a slightly higher ride height if your car is struggling too much over the curbs. Open up the steering and use all of the exit runoff, keeping two wheels inside the white line. On the run up to the infamous turn 4, try to stay slightly towards the middle on the approach rather than all the way to the right. The road actually kinks slightly to the right on entry, so it helps to have a little bit more angle to work with heading into the braking zone. Get onto the kerb and brake just after it starts, shifting down to 4th. In cars like the Porsche, BMW and Audi, which suit a little bit of coasting, you can lift off the brake as you turn in, giving you a stable run through the apex and you can pretty much use all of the kerb. In other cars, you might need to use a little bit of throttle to hold the car on a stable line. As you carry the speed over the apex, you can ease back on the power and use all of the exit curbing available. Try and get the car back to the left as quickly as you can, before turning back to the right just as you pass the point where the green and blue barrier on the left becomes Armco. Almost immediately you need to start trail braking and slowly shift down to second gear, keeping the car in reasonably tight to the inside. You want to try and increase steering slightly about midway through the corner and aim to hit the late apex by getting slightly onto the curbing. Get the power down as early as you can and don't be afraid to abuse all of the exit runoff. Just watch for the white line police to avoid a track limits warning. Into the chicane, you want to brake at the start of the kerb. Shift to second and begin turning in reasonably early in order to cut the corner and straighten out as much as possible. Get over most of the orange sausage kerb, but not quite all of it. Change direction and get on the power over the second part, aiming for exactly the same position regarding the kerbs. Basically, you want to cut most of it, but not quite all of it. Again, car setup and ride height in particular are crucial to avoid bottoming out, so factor this in. Use the exit curbing and stay to the right. This should put you on the right hand side for turn 8 braking roughly in line with the pole that you can see on the left hand side over the armco. Stay in third gear, use the kerb on the inside and don't worry too much about sacrificing speed through here, as being on the left for the entry to turn 9 is more important to your lap time. As soon as you haul the car left, you need to change direction and touch the brakes, shifting to second gear. Aim for the red and white kerb on the inside and get the power on nice and early, short shifting if necessary to avoid excessive understeer. As usual, use all of the exit kerb and try to get back over to the right. For the kink, you might need to lift slightly as it's all about staying fully over to the left hand side. Use the kerb on the inside and keep the power on to get the car fully back over before the braking zone for turn 11. Change direction and brake just after the start of the kerbing, shifting down to third. The back end can get a little bit excited through here so try to be smooth with your inputs, rolling in and getting on the power before the apex, smashing the kerb on the inside. Open up your steering and utilise the very much required exit kerb and runoff area. Stay left for turn 12, applying the brakes right at the start of the kerb on the left. Be careful not to turn in too early here, as the raised section of kerb can throw you wide. I try to turn in around the marshal's hut on the left, and use the red and white kerbing on the apex, whilst being careful not to use too much of that kind of beigey, grey area on the inside. Get back on the power just after the apex, and use the runoff area. Haul yourself quickly back to the right, get on the kerb, and start braking and turning about halfway down. Again, you need to trail brake here, so treat it in a similar style to turn 2. Shift down to second whilst braking and turning, aiming to kiss the first apex. Let the car run out slightly and then cut back across to hit the kerbs in this later second apex. The second one is the most important with this corner, as you can get on the power nice and early whilst also getting back over to the left easier, which will really benefit your line for the final corner. This will also help your exit speed for the only good overtaking spot on the circuit. Get all the way over to the left if you can, and then start turning and braking as you pass the marshal's hut on the left. 
shift down to second, and trail break all the way in. The line through this corner is less of a V than the previous one, and more of a U, with less clearly defined apexes. You need to keep it neat and hug the white line, being careful not to understeer as this will cost you lots of lap time. Get the power on nice and early, open up the steering and abuse all of the runoff area. And that brings us to the end of our lap of the Hangara Ring. Now let's see it at full speed. Here is the lap time I set in this video, plus a couple of other reference lap times. AM represents the kind of time you want to try and do when you're first learning the circuit, PRO-AM is the kind of time that would see you competitive in most races, and of course PRO is the alien lap time. Hopefully you can go away and find some lap time trying some of these lines and techniques for yourself. I think the main thing to emphasise with this one is that you probably won't be able to quite replicate the same corner speed in some of the front engine cars, and since we don't have the straights to claw back the time, they will generally be a bit slower over the lap. I have done a league race around here in a Bentley and found that you can still be competitive enough, but if you want the best chance of winning, you need to pick wisely. Just before I sign off, here are the key points of the lap compiled into 10 seconds. Aim for a late apex and use the curbing through turn 1, trail break and double apex turn 2, flat through 3 and destroy the curbs in and out of 4, hug 5 and cut the chicane, be patient through the next sector focusing on exit speed, keep it tidy through the last section and avoid unwanted understeer like the plague. As always, thank you for watching. If you found this useful or disagreed with any of it, let us know why in the comments section below. And don't forget that if you want to see more traction content as it comes out, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. That's it from me, so until next time, keep it pinned, thanks and goodbye.